Wow, I mean, what do you say? It's like somebody gives you the most delicious cake you've ever eaten, and you say, Nice. But you said the same thing about the last cake you had, <laughs> and that was like some horrible dry cake from Walmart, but I don't know, your expectations were low that day? I, I don't know. It feels disingenuous, right? I mean, I said the Mario movie was amazing, and was one of my favorite movies when I first watched it, but the Wild Robot is not the Mario movie. The Mario movie cannot hold a plunger to this film. Now, this isn't supposed to be me bad-mouthing the Mario movie. I truly did and do enjoy that film. But it's been since Encanto, I think, since we've had a movie that is truly incredible and will be cherished and remembered for generations to come. And no matter who you are, everybody will get something out of this movie. Well, maybe not everybody, but I'll get into that later. Okay, okay, enough hyping up this movie. I need to talk about it. Snap. The Wild Robot film is based off of the book with the same title, and the same storyline is what I'm told by my sister who read it. It follows a Rosam robot nicknamed Roz who is stranded on an island with other critters. If you watch the teaser trailer, the beginning of the film was basically just the first minute of the trailer. Roz is programmed to be a service robot, like C-3PO, but less statistics and more please give me a job and way more helpful let's be honest c3po was just sort of there most of the time <laughs> right out of the box she's ready to go unlike me but of course the animals didn't order her nor can she even understand them so there's a bit of resistance between her and the locals which means roz has to adjust to her surroundings because she's programmed for service to humans not squirrels what does she do to adapt she learns the language of animals. Sign me up. I mean, I want to understand what my rabbits are saying about me. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. But even with this new ability, the animals still don't like her. Because she's different? <laughs> I mean, it's 2024, guys. Can, can't we just accept people for who they are? So she gets sad and tries to get returned to Amazon or something with her beacon thing. But gets interrupted by a literal swarm of raccoons. There's too many of them. This makes me uncomfortable. After a run-in with a bear, voiced by Luke Skywalker, she accidentally squashes a family of geese. That, that got violent quick. There's one egg left, however. And can you guess where we're gonna go with this? I bet you can. Yeah, she becomes a robot mom. It's here we're introduced to Fink the Fox, voiced by Pedro Pascal. And uh, he's a little bit of a stinker. He wants to get the egg, but he doesn't. Because Roz protects the little egg until it hatches, she's like, well, I guess the assignment's over. And she tries to reboot her beacon thing, and then the gosling breaks it. At this point, she's given a new assignment. Get the gosling to fly south by winter. There's some steps in between, but that's the overarching goal here. Now, who's, who's gonna raise... This little guy right here, this little cute guy. <laughs> well, Roz and Fink, an unlikely duo to raise this little gosling, whose name is Bright Bill, but they have their fair share of troubles with predators and other problems along the way. This is partially due to Bright Bill being a runt. In the end, Bright Bill does go south thanks to Roz preparing him and an old goose named Longneck, great name, which allows him to fly south with him. Oh, and there's this cool like falcon creature. I, I don't remember, but that, that scene was that scene was freaking amazing like it gave me goosebumps uh, get, see what i did there goose goosebumps <laughs> okay but where he leaves it off with roz is kind of on a sour note they're kind of mad at each other so roz is like well i completed my task and now i'm going back to the factory however something inside her keeps her on the island and no, it's not indigestion. This is something that wasn't in her programming. It's her love for the animals and ultimately Bright Bill. While Bright Bill is off flying south, he discovers that he actually did love Roz, but he never got a chance to say so. Back on the island, Roz and Fink work together to gather the animals in a shelter she built as the harshest and most brutal winter yet descends on the island. Through that meaningful moment, Roz brings together the animals so that they are all united. When spring comes, Bright Bill returns, only to find that Roz is nowhere, because she actually did activate her beacon thing for just a moment, because she felt like nobody needed her anymore. The bad robots come to get her, and the forest animals fight it out against the robots and win, but not really because eventually she gets captured anyway. But with help from the other geese, Bright Bill saves her. And here's the thing though, they're just gonna keep on coming for her. So she sacrifices herself to protect the animals and the island. At this point, I thought the movie was over. But no, she gets refurbished by the people down at Elon Musk Town. Like, memory wiped and everything. But Bright Bill visits her, and they have a really precious moment. And she proves that AI does indeed have a soul. 
No, wait. So that's the shmovie. How good was it? Well, I'll leave my final thoughts for the conclusion, but I would be lying if I said the wild robot didn't make my eyes misty. Not quite full on tears, there's a difference guys, but it actually wasn't the Brightbill and Roz interactions that got me choked up. Those were sweet, but what really got me was the wholesome relationship between Fink, Roz, and the other animals. And oh man, I need to talk about Fink. Maybe it's just the stage of life that I'm in right now, I mean, I don't have any children, so... But something about Fink's character made me relate to him a lot more than the sentient piece of metal. Her character was great, by the way. I just liked Fink a little bit better. Maybe because he's a fox and foxes are the best. In the beginning of the film, he was the outcast. Nobody liked him, much less cared about him. And then when Roz came along and listened to what he had to say, he bonded with her and Brightbill, who he kind of helped raise, by the way. But the key word here is listen. When somebody listens to you, it shows they care. And as somebody who doesn't have many friends myself, but the friends I do have, I'm really close with, I just thought the character growth was just phenomenal. Especially when the whole island came together and found common ground to survive the winter, and later defend Roz. Common ground is so important in a world that is fighting to divide everyone up into categories and social groups. This movie addresses that we're just trying to survive, and to get along, we don't have to agree with each other or even like each other. We just have to respect each other and our differences. And that's a powerful lesson. However, that's not the overarching lesson here. I would say the wild robot has about three lessons here. The getting along with each other one I just mentioned, another being there's no right way to parent a child, and the last one that they really home in on, especially at the end, is that parent-child relationships are complicated. But in the end, both the child and the parent love each other. Something so simple, yet so profound. It's quite touching to see Brightbill and Roz realize this throughout the movie, that letting the other know that you love each other is healing. Because Brightbill is a runt, he wasn't supposed to survive. I used to raise rabbits, I know that runts survive a grand total of like zero times, especially in the wild. Roz was supposed to be a mindless machine serving humans who don't give a flip about her, but they both ended up in a situation that was unprecedented for their kinds, and they had to adapt, or like the trailer puts it, We must become more than we were programmed to be. I also want to briefly touch on the other message in the wild robot that I mentioned, and that's that there's no right way to parenting. There are some wrong ways, don't get me wrong, but if you care for a child out of wanting the best for said child, that's all it takes. There was an episode in Bluey that also touched on this, Baby Race, which is where Chili, the mom of Bluey, feels like she's failing because Bluey isn't learning at a quote-unquote normal pace. I mean, neither did I, and look at me now. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. At the end of the episode, however, she's met with another mom who has eight kids. Wait, no? Nine. At one point, she even looks into the camera and says, you're doing great, as if to say to the parent who's watching with their child. I need to do a whole video on Bluey one of these days. I digress. The wild robot follows this theme because Roz is like, parenting is not in my programming. And then a mom of possums tells Roz, no one does. Hmm, I'm seeing parallel themes here, folks. All that to say, if you're a parent, what the heck are you doing? There have been so many robot movies, and some of them are great, like Wally, which is a masterclass in storytelling. But some of them fail in being memorable, like Ron's Gone Wrong. Does anybody remember that movie? Because I sure didn't until just now. It's so hard to make a robot empathizable. That's a word, right? Yeah, we'll make it one. In this fast approaching world of artificial intelligence, many have used AI as the antagonist for the obvious reason that robots can't feel emotions such as love and pain and they often misunderstand assignments. But this movie actually addresses this in a pretty good way. The feeling love and pain, not misunderstanding assignments. <laughs> of course, the creators made Roz a vessel and a symbol for parents out there, explaining that no one has programming for parenting, and it can get hard, especially when the child doesn't seem to appreciate you. But they did their best to attempt to explain how Roz has feelings. There's a scene where Roz finds another broken Roz and robot, and basically has a therapy session with herself come to think of it <laughs> how can a robot love someone can a piece of machinery truly love someone we find out that roz has actually rewritten her programming which hey i guess kids will make you do that and that's just the beautiful thing about this film 
It's a great big symbol for parents and kids and how they drive each other nuts but still love each other. I think the reason why the wild robot is so loved is that it has that charm missing from so many modern animated movies. The same charm that made everyone fall in love with Pixar and Disney movies. The entire interaction with the tired possum mom and her children felt like the dialogue was ripped straight out of an old Walt Disney animated movie. The children sounded like children and the humor with them was not over the top, which is much appreciated. I think a lot of people don't realize how important smooth dialogue is. Blah blah de blah bleedy bleed blue blah blah. Ooh. Thank you. Especially when it comes to comedic dialogue. Humor has gotten stupid lately. And I'm not blaming it on Gen Alpha, but I'm also not not blaming it on them. Many animated movies have opted for the out-of-pocket humor, which is just when the music builds up and stops only for that stupid side character to say something completely random. And then the other side character comments on what the other side character said. It's gotten so old and it's such a lazy way to write humor in. It degrades not only that character, but also the whole film. I mean, come on, you're not Nickelodeon. The whole film just made me feel good, you know? I haven't seen a movie from the three big animated studios that made me feel good since Encanto. And no, once again, Sony Animations does not count as one of the big dogs yet. But I mentioned earlier that some people may not enjoy this film as much as others. And that's people who have read the book. It's not like you can't enjoy it, it's just that you already know it's gonna happen. And oh man, those trailers that they put out for this movie almost completely spoiled the film for me. Can we just stop with the trailers showing the entire plot of the film? I mean, they basically show the ending scene right there in the freaking trailer. So I can imagine how people who have read the book and know how it's gonna end feel. How could you say that movie was only okay? But then they said it was basically just the book, so that makes sense. But even then, my little sister who read the book still said it was incredible and one of her favorite movies. But either way, if you're thinking about what order to consume wild robot content, uh, go with the film first, then the first book. And please, for the love of Mike Wazowski, don't spoil the inevitable second movie by reading the second book already. I promise you'll like it better. So yeah, you can already buy The Wild Robot on YouTube officially, and you can pre-order the DVD or Blu-ray on Amazon, which will release early December. You Gen Alpha kids don't know how good you've got it. I remember back when I had to wait months, sometimes even years, after a movie's theatrical release for it to finally be available on Redbox. And for it to be on streaming? Pfft, you're waiting two or three years at least for the latest animated blockbuster to make it on Netflix, bud. Now everyone's competing to have their movie out as soon as possible, which kind of diminishes the anticipation. And that in turn devalues the film in a way. In this world of instant satisfaction, we don't have to wait for anything. So does that make movies worse? Better? I don't know. Let me know. So to conclude, what would I rate this film? Honestly, I think it's better than Inside Out 2, which was about as peak as Pixar can get, which just goes to show that DreamWorks can rival or even outperform the competition if they try to. But then they go and release the 20th sequel to Trolls. Please ditch Trolls, DreamWorks. Oh, and while you're at it, change back your intro. There was nothing wrong with your old one. Wild Robot gets a thumbs up and a certified Tape Plus approval from me. Beat that, Disney.